Good day, YouTube. I'll do one back for another video. Must excuse me if the audio isn't the best because I'm standing outside on the, on the balcony at the moment to kind of get some better air and some better sound. And um, this week's topic actually comes from our very own Angelo. It's a very good question. I really love when we get, get questions from the folks that we all kind of work with because they've had time to see so many different questions. They've had time to see different takes on these things. So it's very interesting to see such a great question come from one of our own. So let's go ahead and tackle it. Summing up of the whole question is, um, how do you connect with deity? And what do you do if you feel like you are kind of misconnected with deity? And it also puts in a small stipulation there saying that if you don't actually have a particular deity, um, do you work with the energies of this deity? Or, or, or basically, how do you interpret deity? How do you feel more whole and feel a part of deity? The first thing I thought about when I saw this question is, how do you see deity? You know, is deity, do you see deity as being something that is real? Do you believe these people actually inhabited flesh bodies? Do you think that they lived here thousands of years ago? Or do you see them as more of pure energy ideas based on concepts that peoples from long ago built to try to explain away their own uh, misconceptions, their own shortcomings and things of that nature. Well, that's going to be a very personal thing for you. So I'm going to answer it from my standpoint and how I feel about deity. I believe that deity, I believe that these people, these beings lived here in the flesh at some point in time. I believe they passed into the energy realm uh, at, at, at death, and I believe, based off of karma, I believe that they went on to inherit the powers that make them god and goddesses. I do heavily believe in karma. I know there's a lot of witches that believe in karma. I believe that so long as you make decisions that don't directly benefit yourself, it kind of almost adds to your karmic level. And I know it's far more complicated than that. I disrespect that it's way more complicated than that, but just to make it very simple in this short amount of time I have here with you all, because it's gonna take, who knows, hours to explain everything. And I'm only one human. I can't pull in every single detail of what it means to uh, understand karma and especially climbing that karmic ladder that makes you to deity. But I know that the basic principle is making selfless choices and then sometimes making great sacrifices for yourself. We do learn from, from many different religions that sacrifices lead, selfless sacrifices lead to a higher karmic situation when you are reincarnated. I do believe that a lot of these deities went through those different situations. I'm sure that there's, there was lots of pain, lots of struggle, and lots of sacrifice to get to where they are. Now, where does that lead you? How do you connect to these particular deities? How do you make that connection? There are many people who like to work within the pantheon that they have a genetic connection with. For example, there's a lot of people who are into Hellenistic pantheons because they are uh, similarly linked through their genetic identity. And I believe that's a wonderful way to start. I personally use a, I personally work with several deities, um, some from my own genetic lineage that can be linked to uh, Haitian voodoo. I work with a particular Greek goddess as well, and I work with a Egyptian god. I've talked about it before, you've seen some of the tattoos in some of the older videos. I hold these deities to be very, very sacred. Um, I love them just as much as a Christian loves the Christian god. And seeking connection with these deities, um, I, it was simple prayer. I did a, I did an evocation. Uh, once I felt their energy was there, I said a simple prayer. I, st I made offerings and I kept them, kept them in my thoughts. Now, for you, um, if you don't get a response in a certain amount of time, I would say give it two weeks. If you have studied your evocations, if you performed them to the best of your ability and you haven't had any responses, no responses in the way of dreams, no responses in the way of visions, or at least feeling like something's there, it's okay to move on. Uh, you don't have to keep trying to reach out to this particular deity over and over again. And I'll tell you why. In my time, working in this pagan realm and speaking with different deities and going on journeys, I have learned that there are many deities that are very much aware of one another. Because they are aware of one another, sometimes there are certain agreements where they will only work with you once you attain a certain level. So I say that to say that maybe it is not your particular time to work with that deity right now. And based off of some kind of agreement, you are meant to reach out to another deity, perhaps in another pantheon, 
and then you can come back and work with that deity. So I would say give it two weeks. If you don't get any dreams, if you don't get any feelings and things, go ahead and move on to a different deity within that pantheon. Or if there's another deity in a different pantheon that you think lines up with you for whatever reason, whether you have an affinity for their particular element, go ahead and reach out to them. Go ahead and perform the evocation. Go ahead and, and, and create some kind of offering to them. And just wait, you may get a verbal response. You may feel a presence in the room. You may start seeing them a lot uh, pop up in your daily life. You may literally get emails based off of other pagan things that just shows that they are responding. That is the major thing on how to stay connected to deity in my mind. Always keeping them in your thoughts, making sure that you honor their, their cycles because just like the seasons, these deities, they have different cycles that they go through changes, especially certain goddesses. They have three different faces, three different attitudes. It's very important to be aware of the foods that they like, make sure that you offer them at certain times of the month, especially around full moons. Just staying involved with the cycle of the energetic change and how it affects your particular god or goddess can make a big difference on, on the kind of response that you get. And one thing I want to say before I leave, the extremely gifted among us, sometimes you'll see these deities literally manifest in an energy form where if your third eye is open, you'll see them, you'll hear them. And one thing I will say is that some of them have some of the most extravagant interests. I'm talking about rose petals, them being carried on carriages. Um, sometimes the carriages are held up by, by, by servants. Animals will appear, dogs and things. They will appear, you'll hear them, you'll smell them. For the most gifted among us, they appear in that form. So they, a lot of these deities have quite a flair for the theatric. Uh, I will say, if you're one of those people who can uh, who can actually perceive these things, if you can smell these sights, if you can see these animals and servants and things, it is quite the show to see because this is how they show themselves to other gods, to other deities, to other spiritual beings on their realm. This is their entourage. They're allowing you to see all this. It's amazing. Um, now, if you're not quite there yet, because a lot of us aren't there, I'm not even there. I've learned this through working with different 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 beings, different colleagues and things, and I've learned that this is the way that a lot of these deities show up. It's gonna be quite a treat. Um, I hope that it just about answers the questions, the wonderful question. I wanna see more like this. And guys, what do you think? Uh, what have you experienced? How do you connect to, to deity? Go ahead and post that down below. Again, it might help somebody who has been waiting for that particular question for their deity all along. Um, also, I wouldn't mind seeing down there which deities do you guys hold as your patron and matron deities as well, and why? Why did you pick them? Did you pick them because of genetic identity? Did you pick them just because you kept hearing their name in your dreams? You kept seeing them while you were at school? Um, did someone draw the draw this deity in a book at school and you saw it and it made you want to reach out to them? Let us know. It can help someone else. And I will see you guys back here. That's about it. I'll see you guys back here next week for another video. Thanks so much for watching the video. And blessed be.